Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being, uh, of the town of Amherst, is being conducted by our remote participation. Okay. All right. So we can go ahead. Thank you, Kim. So, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce who's here for Amber for the minute. So it's me, Tracy, who's the chair, and Kim, who's the vice chair, and Joe and Stefan. And Joe, you can still hear us, right? Yep, loud and clear. And Stefan, you can still hear us too. Yep. Awesome. And um, and we don't have Marcus or Kim here yet, but I'll try to remember if they show Chris, up. And Kim Gilford. is here. Oh, I mean, Chris and yeah. Marcus. Yeah. And Guilford is here. And Guilford is here. He loves meetings as much as we do. You guys wore me out this morning. Oh, it was a good meeting, though. It was. At first, Jason was the only one there. I was wondering, like, if you were both going to be there. No, uh, I was there. I just had my camera turned off. Oh. So, okay. All right. So, um, let's get started. So... We were originally, the agenda that I had sent to Amber last week was to discuss uh, the Transportation Commission draft charge, which is something that the town manager had said that he would send to me in time for TAC to discuss it. Um, but upon further review, it is not yet ready for TAC to review it. He would like to bring it to TAC at our next meeting um, or a meeting. And we talk, he and I talked about it coming to TAC on June 20th. I'm assuming that's going to be as long as, uh, as long as we have a quorum that day. And he thought that that would give him sufficient time to get additional feedback, including from people like Guilford and planning and whoever else wants to comment. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, all right. So then I did have some other updates, including from this from the TSO meeting this morning that Guilford was at. Uh, but if we can go ahead, and I'm sure Amber will love us for this, if we can go ahead and do the minutes, that'd be awesome. For these old minutes that go all the way back until August, which is just sad. Yeah. Well, it's um, just, yeah, it's August through. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up. Um, November. I can pull up a couple of them. I was just. Well, reviewing. I, I, I review them all. Have. Um, the others, because we could just do this as a consensus as well. Okay. Does um, anybody else has anybody else reviewed them? I looked over it briefly. It looks fine to me. Yeah, okay. they're not very extensive, so that's fine. They're not very extensive. Yeah, I mean, um, I made some minor like edits to one, but nothing like substantive ish. Nothing to, it was just like literally edits, nothing to change the real. Like the content really. Okay. I just, yep. I was just trying to fill in like some pieces about what, what was being, yeah. I mean, we can always ask for a little more details in the minutes. And, and also at this point too, I, I didn't even have like a good attendance record. Like for example, in August, Gil, uh, Jason was here and Guilford wasn't here. Um, And the meeting's coming back to me then. And as per the minutes also, Jess Slavin was here. Was at the oh, meeting right. the mass yeah, bike. Yeah. So that would actually be, I mean, one thing we could do is bring her to another meeting. Yeah. I was thinking that so, too. Um so I can reach out to her for that. And so those meetings looked fine to me in the September one. Yeah. So let's see, we can one, two, yeah. Okay. So do we just want to go ahead then and um just approve them all? Yeah, consensus. I I um I move to approve um all the minutes um included in this packet um as a, on a consensus vote. Seconds. I second. Okay, great. And say all in favor. So aye. 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 All right. So Four, yeah. two, zero. And um and all of us, I just like to check the attendance. We were all at each meeting. I hadn't opened. I was at all of them. I know that. I was at all of them. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna double check before. Uh, and around that period too, we did have some canceled meetings. 
that we didn't have. Um... Yeah, so I guess one thing is on the November 16th minutes, um, Stefan wasn't there, but Joe was there. So, I mean, I guess we can approve it like three to zero or we could wait until Chris comes, which she said she was going to come. And then... Even if you're not at a meeting, you can vote the yeah. minutes. Yeah, oh, you can. All right. Okay. So that's they're approved. They're approved. That. Okay. Yep. Great. Unanimously approved. Great. So that is all of them. Wow, we're just our agenda is going to be done really soon, and it's excellent because it's been long. All right, and then okay, so then our other agenda items, and I do hope that um, Chris wants some comments because she did have some good safe routes to school updates. So um, the one update was, the first update was about TSO's meeting this morning. Um, Gilbert, do you wanna talk about that at all? Um, no, you can do it. <laughs> I can do it, okay. So let's see. So on the TSO agenda, hold on, let me pull it. There was a lot on the agenda today. Guilford was there, Jason Skills was there. Chief Ting was there from the police department. And hold on, it's going. And so one thing they talked, so one thing is they started the meeting and they had a presentation from Fort River students, fifth graders at Fort River. It was a whole class and there were four students who spoke and they were focused on safe routes to school. Um, and I guess they had met with Guilford previously. Is that correct, Guilford? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and they developed some recommendations related to separated bike lanes and just in general supporting the creation of safety zones, traffic safety zones in town, relating to school zones and having longer hours for the flashing lights, um, relating to the passage of the bicycle and pedestrian plan and creating better bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure in town and so on they were um, they did a great presentation and i think they're probably going to submit their comments in writing um and i've also heard that they're going to be meeting next week with um some town officials because they are foray into participating in town government was on zoom so i think some people wanted to offer them the opportunity to actually come to town hall Gilford, are you going to be there for that or when they go to town hall, yeah. Have you uh, heard that they're coming to town hall? Uh, probably, uh, probably won't. It's a pretty, it's a really interesting class. I mean, they were very nice and organized. And they know what uh -huh. they were. Huh. So that's great. Yeah, and uh, so that was exciting. And then there were discussions just about speed limits and speed limit enforcement and what the police department has capacity to do and what the police department doesn't have capacity to do. And, um, and then let's see, there was also discussion about, um, well, there were specific discussions about Henry street um, and that in the packet for that meeting, there was the engineering report from Henry street on the idea of creating the safety zone and uh and i did send you a link to that i did send out a link to that for anybody who's interested in the details on that so based on that report um the tso approved with all neighbors in favor um creating a safety zone on henry street and so um and so Guilford, can you tell us like what the next steps are in that then well to go to town council and a town council votes yes right. yeah okay so then you'll get happens. little signs that say safety zones speed limit at 20 miles 25 miles an hour and the, the i think they already kind of approved the flashing driver feedback not flashing but the driver feedback sign right okay so the TSO, some... they didn't take a vote on that part this morning right no no but they had voted they had the council had voted that earlier true um, now, in the safety zones, I'm sorry, is it 20 miles an hour or 25 miles an hour? Uh, it might be I think, 20. I think it's 20. It's, it's 20. I was just double checking. Okay. Um, so that was approved, and some of the details are still to be worked out, including what traffic calming measures would be done, right? 
Right. So at this point, Guilford, my understanding was TSO, they hadn't authorized like any other specific traffic calming measures, but that no. would that be something that like DPW will look at based on the report or? Yeah, I mean, they vote, well, I mean, the big big thing is they recommend that that get attention sure. before everything else. But... Okay, we'll get in the queue, right? But all right. And then there was also discussion about Heatherstone um, and again, the TSO approved like the proposal for Heatherstone, including removing the planter median, adding the sidewalks on the east side from Pelham Road to Auburn, Auburn Wood Road, northern intersection with Heatherstone, and then also doing the mini roundabouts. And yes. there were some questions about the mini roundabouts in terms of how big they'd actually be and how they could impact a little bit of the takings. So Jason Skills, for example, mentioned that at the intersections that have the many roundabouts that you may need to push the sidewalks back a little bit just because the intersection will be a little bit larger than if the many roundabouts weren't there. Um, but so what is that all gonna be happening this summer, do you think? Uh yep. Wow. Right. Yeah. It, it, um, I have a, hold on, I can, well, I can tell you more in a second. Um, Do you have any drawings or anything you can show us about? No. No, okay. Uh, no, no, it's kind of on the, this is kind of on the fly. Um, so actually... It may, if it happens this summer, it'll happen sometime in August or September. Um, so now, is it is all that work going to be done at the same time as the paving? Is that how that works? That's how it works. Right now, we put the paving off until the, well, until the council says, yes, we can do it. We put the paving off. So I just got a schedule today, and I was looking through the schedule, and um most of the work, well, the reclaimer is coming in. The reclaiming machine is coming in um, the third week of June. So the council has to approve it for the third week of June to actually get started before August. Okay. Sorry, I, that's too much. You don't want to know all that information. No, but wait, I'm sorry. So what does the what does the council need to approve? Isn't didn't they already approve? They have to take the TSO's recommendation. Oh, I see. I understand. Okay. Got it. All right. And then what were the other elements he talked about? I mean, so there, oh, and the other thing that happened is that uh, the TSO voted to recommend that Amherst opt into Mass General Law Chapter 90, Section 17C, which allows municipalities to change the statutory speed limit for roads that are otherwise not posted for local roads that are otherwise not posted from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. Um, so then if that was approved by the council, then, um, then there would be signs that would be put up at each of the roads entering Amherst that would say that if approved it, that that's the I don't know what do the signs say. Do they just say densely settled? They say densely settled, um, twenty five miles per hour, unless otherwise posted. Unless otherwise posted. Okay. So they approved that. So that's something that had originally come up in twenty nineteen, and it was proposed by a resident after there was um, a student killed on North Pleasant Street, north of campus, getting off the bus, and so at that time, um, that commoner at a public meeting had asked both for that section 18B that allows the creation of safety zones and for 17C that allows the statutory speed limit to be dropped to 25 miles an hour to be done. So this has been sitting you know, on the council's plate since then. So um, it's not really clear exactly what a big, how much of a difference it will make because I think as we've talked about and has come up at TSO meetings, that changing speed limits just by themselves doesn't actually necessarily encourage people to drive a lot slower. If there's not enforcement and you haven't done anything to reconfigure the road and really like force people to drive slower, but um, it still can send, I mean, what 
the TSO members were saying is that it still sends a message saying that they value lower speeds. Other towns have passed it, Northampton, Greenfield, Westfield, Chicopee. They've all passed it townwide, citywide. So it's not a bad thing. It's just not, it doesn't necessarily, ch you know, change the speeds in town from high to low right away. But, you know, it's going, it, to me, it seems like even though they're not necessarily that effective, um, it is like a step in the right direction about just saying that that's a value that the community has. Um, so I do have a question, Guilford, related to that is, like you had mentioned, and I think it's really important that right, any roads that are already posted with other speed limits, that those speed limits are still in effect. Yes. And um, so is there a list, you know, that you have of what, what, what the speed limits are like what roads are posted there there is sort there is sort of a list um it's all over the place it's multiple lists is what it is okay um, and we were talking about that today and i guess we're probably gonna have to come we're probably gonna have to clean it up and put it post it somewhere that these are the posted roads and these are the non-posted roads okay so like for example so i know that sometimes i've referenced the mass dot like database not that that's perfect you know the road inventory file that they have on their gis system but i noticed in there for amherst for example that there's a lot of roads that don't have any listed speed limits which i assume is just the underlying statutory speed limit applies yes um and this morning i had asked too about heatherstone and jason said that heatherstone was posted for 30 miles an hour but I actually don't think, are there actually speed limit signs on Heatherstone? There are no signs. Yeah. So if there aren't any signs and it's not actually posted at that, right? So that would, in this case, then Heatherstone, then the 25 miles per hour apply to Heatherstone? No, what, what, it no means, what, it, what it means is someone took the signs down. They were just never, no one ever said anything about them. So they've been down for a while. And they probably oh. went down a long time ago and no one said anything about <laughs> Here's our signs. Okay. Because I know, for example, like in the Matt, Mass DOT, like road inventory file, it doesn't list any speed limits for, um, I said this morning that it did, but it, when I looked back again, it didn't, I'd like pulled the wrong field. So it didn't have any listed. Yeah. And there's a bunch of confusion in the, <laughs> I mean, most of the speed limits in the town actually were set in the seventies. So there's some confusion. Okay. So, I mean, and there must be some, so like if, as you said, like, so example, like with Heatherstone, if, if you're saying that there is a posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour, but then it's not actually posted anywhere because there may have been signs at one time, but they haven't been there in a while, then is it still we we what we do is we still well, need to do some study or something because like nobody actually knows that that would be the speed limit. I don't think. No, if there's if there hasn't been a um, what happens is, and it happens both ways. People just put have just put signs up that aren't legal signs, and people have taken signs down and not complained about it, so they've just been down. Okay. So we when we find out or we decide to we need to take a look. Uh, we go through all the records and we go through and we find out if there is one, is, is a speed regulation or not a speed regulation. And whatever the speed regulation was, that's what goes up. Got it. Okay. We actually do have some streets that have like 25s and 30s on them that aren't supposed to. Um, oh. And then aren't there like some, like I think about like near like the Amherst College fields, like Orchard or things, aren't there some like lower... I know the argument's been made, right? That some of the roads are posted with lower speed limits than they would be posted at if they were using. There are some that are like they predate like any kind of like 80th percentile settings or anything like that. Well, no, the, the 80th percentile goes back to the 70s. Right. Okay. So you those those were actually done at that time and people just didn't drive as fast in the 70s. Mm. Don't you remember your mom's car in the 70s? If it went over 40, it like shook like crazy and I remember the gas shortage, but no, I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember my mom's car that much. <laughs> so. My first car was a 70 and oh. I started driving in 80 and it was like, it just shook all the time when you got to 45. Well, my car only had four speeds. I remember that. 
pretty pretty high revving the engine at any okay all right so it sounds like you know if this is approved by the council then one thing that dpwd will be kind of cleaning up and making i mean hopefully i would hope that you could make something available for neighborhoods or other people who are going to be asking about <laughs> what are their posted speed limits and so on i thought there were like just statewide like neighborhood limits that's okay. actually 30 miles an hour i think that's, that's like a de facto statue. yeah and okay. there's this and it has to be like you have to kind of be in the know in massachusetts but when you enter like a village area right. and it but says, usually it says like it says densely settled that's right. a yeah, yeah. word that it's like 30 miles an hour but right. it doesn't even always say 30 miles an hour on those you're just supposed to be familiar with mass general law and know that that's the code word and it means 30 miles an hour and that's my remembering of it, like village centers and stuff like that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that. I mean, so one of the questions that came up at the TSO meeting this morning, too, was just from an enforcement standpoint, like at what what is needed, you know, for there to be enforcement of speed limits or not, not just in terms of personnel, but like legally, right? Like if you post the 25 mile per hour speed limit, at the roads entering Amherst, does that mean like on any of these roads that automatically, even if it doesn't say 25 miles an hour anywhere, you know, do the police, can the police still say, sorry, you're going too fast, that the underlying speed limit is 25. So it's complicated. Um, so, and I do want to also note um, that Chris Lindstrom is now here. Thank you, Chris and Amber. I'm just I think I forgot to tell Amber that Marcus just showed up in the middle of the meeting last time. Okay. Um so that was all good. And then I don't know, Chris, did you have any other I just talked about how those Fort River students came to TSO this morning. Um and did you have any other updates you want to share, like with Safe Routes to School or um yeah, the so the Fort River kids are um are doing a bike ride. The the same class from the fifth grade from Fort River is doing a bike ride next Tuesday morning to Town Hall, and they're going to meet Lynn, um, Greisimer, and Andy Steinberg, and I don't know who else is going to be there. Um, and they're going to, uh, I guess, do like a a mock meeting for them so that the kids can present their. The results of the survey they did a survey um at the farmer's market last weekend cool. and um they have a letter that they wrote which they read today i think they're going to read that again and um this is a way for andy as chair of tso and lynn as the pro council president to like formally accept their um their letter and the results of their survey and their recommendations so um, that's cool. And then um, the Fort River PE teacher is um, going to be holding a bike rodeo, is getting in touch with Tori, our Western Mass um, liaison for Safe Routes, to do a bike rodeo there next fall. And she is attempting to pull in the other PE teachers. Um, so that whole piece is going well. There's, um, you know, a couple parents who are pretty enthusiastic about that too. And um, I think we'll be psyched to work with the PE. Um, and that is what I know so far that Fort River class moves fast though. So they probably have something else happening that I don't know about. Okay, cool. So I do recall that there used to be some bike rodeos what, um, that were held by the police department. I don't know who was doing them, but maybe like five or 10 years ago. Does that sound familiar did, to anybody? I did talk to um, Bill Laramie about okay. 18 months ago, and he... he said that that was true, but then um, they sort of lost enthusiasm on the school district side so oh, i think they okay. were doing them as a part the the apd was doing it as a partnership um through safe routes to school oh, all uh, right with the district and then the district kind of um 
he defined it as lost interest. Huh. Interesting. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't actually know when the super, I need to meet with Debbie Westmoreland in the superintendent's office just to find out how to approach the new super. Sure. When she gets instituted, you know, gets kind of in place and when's a good time to talk to her about all this stuff. But, um, I think individual schools can do their own thing. I yeah. Think- I mean, I had mentioned to you, right, that um, Crocker Farm, the after school program, they used to have little bike days that they would do with yeah. Morse Hill, um, the outdoor center, like providing the bikes and the staffing. And because Crocker Farm has the two different entrances, you know, they would do it on the Shea Street side, which has like you come down the hill and there's like the circle and so on. Right. So they wouldn't be like in, they weren't, you know, sharing this road space with anybody. Um, yeah. And, so- it be, and it would be great too if we, you mm-hmm. know, if, if there's a way to get it, like actually, I mean, the after school programs and the rodeos, it's all good. It's all great outreach. It's all great for encouraging kids to use bikes and particularly like with more so where they provided the bikes for kids who didn't have them. Um, yeah. But it's great. I would love to see like, you know, longer term if because safe routes the safe routes school program does have those great curriculums you know we're like introducing yeah. it bike transportation in second grade or third grade and it's curriculum in a box and i did know, they have like a to conversation train, they like to train the trainer and it would just be great to have like every second grade yeah in the district yeah. or at least at one school just like has that opportunity to do that little thing right. just yeah like yeah i think that's right do. so i did speak to um Tammy Sullivan Daly, who is the principal at Fort River, when I was addressing the class a couple weeks ago, I saw her afterwards and chatted. She seemed to think that, um, you know, because of the leadership vacuum at ARPS, the curriculum director, Anne, is it Keelty or Keeley? Ann Keeley is her name. Okay. Um, she suggested, she said that I should hold off on contacting her ah. until the new super comes in. She said it's just um it's a bit overwhelming. Oh, um sure. the difficulties that they've had, you know, that these kind of central staff <laughs> have had. So mm-hmm. um you know, I'm excited because Kaylee is who is the PE teacher at Fort River just wants to do this on her own. Nice. This is cool. And um, so she, I said, okay, well, we've got this meeting with Tori um, set up. Why don't you try to pull in the other PE teachers too? And she's like on it. So nice. Hopefully, hopefully we can just kind of go place by place and then do something central later. Well, and also, right, like, I mean, Fort River is going to be the site of the new school, which is yeah. basically going to combine, you know, two of the schools with Crocker Farm not being, com- so if we're going to build a culture like that, Fort River seems like a great place to start, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know? um, Assuming it's- a lot of those people will still be there, so, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, okay, and... And then I know the other, I mean, just with Safe Routes to School and I mean, there are like international, like car free day in September, you know, I know that UMass has sometimes tried to do things. And then of course the Massachusetts Safe Routes to School program, the K to 12 program will be doing in early October. Again, they'll be doing their fall walk, bike and roll. Yeah. I mean, I think our event. stable of parents um, at this point, um, remains committed to doing those days awesome yeah and so how many like kind of active parents do you have in that now your like team leaders and co-leaders or um whatever the school you have a couple people at each school at least right yeah i'd say um probably 15 total at the elementary school okay great um sorry the church bells are going off here at umass um, and I don't have any, um, identified parents at the middle school at all. So I think the middle school continues to be a challenge in terms of what to do, but 
Um, I do know the new environmental club advisor at the high school. And my daughter and her friends are um, in the environmental club. So I have an in. Nice. Uh, when I, she... think, I think my daughter might be the president next year. So I think wow. we have to dig in. And that's in the high school. She's right. all ready for it. Yeah. She's awesome. ready for it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I think what I'm going to try to do is pitch the idea of uh, ambassadors. Yeah. So that um, we can figure out a way to get kids into neighborhoods maybe once a month and they can be leading. Um, I like that. They can be leading small groups of kids uh, biking and walking um, at least once a month from different neighborhoods. Cool. So um, that's my big idea. Um, I think, well, I know Talib and Mickey both think that that's really cool, but unless there's another adult, AKA an environmental club advisor and, you know, some kids who are already have enthusiasm for it, I don't think it, they're not going to drive it. So yeah. I'm hopeful that this coming year, because there's a new advisor, um, that we can potentially make it a project of the of the environmental club nice that's excellent and that's great you know it's great at the high school too it was really awesome having high school kids do it yeah and we, and we know the president of the high school <laughs> club <laughs> awesome <Yay>, congratulations <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's great um maybe uh yeah I think we tried to get my daughter in touch with yours. Maybe oh. I can try that one yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just before the school year is yes. out. Because of course now my daughter is doing a project on, you know, like reducing, you know, reducing global warming emissions from transportation sector oh, and walking nice. and um at or in the eighth grade civics class. So it's just it's, She's surrounded by it. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, cool. So then I was also just going to go through, I did send a list of it out. This was a, just a daily Hampshire Gazette list that I'm assuming the town sent to Scott Mersbeck, just like summarizing the projects that are on the list for this year. You mean um, the road projects? Like the road projects, including like paving projects and, oh. um, or I can just share like the screen quick of them. Yeah, that would be great. And then I don't know, Gilford, you, you can did, tell wait, us. You did uh, send it out or no? I sent it out. I thought in attachment. I only sent it out. I was basically in meetings like almost until five <laughs> from like this morning. So. Oh yeah, the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Yes. You yeah. Did. So I did send it out. I mean here. So mm -hmm. I guess again, this is a list provided by the town manager. It says for the paving work, right? Like Bellevue Cottage Street, Edge Hill, Farmington. Yes, that's all the paving work. That's all the paving work. And then it also talks about Heatherstone and Rolling Ridge. Is Rolling Ridge still on the schedule? It says, though, it may be delayed. What do you want, say, girl? Is that right? Is Rolling Ridge um, going to be on the schedule? Rolling Ridge is still on the list. Okay. And then... um. And then there's just like the work that the state is doing on 116. And I don't know, do you have any other kind of projects that aren't just like paving projects, Gilford? Well, the state's also doing a sidewalk project on 63, which just popped in. It's kind of weird. It just jumped up. Oh, interesting. Um, what is 63? No. And what, just, where, where is it on 63? What is it? It's this, they're just replacing the sidewalk from um, Coles, Ro Coles oh. Road to um, Pulpit Hill. Uh, oh, okay. That's just not, yeah. Are they doing other work there too, like paving and then the sidewalk as well? Or? No, just the sidewalk. And then we're still ripping up the North Common. We're ripping up the South Common now. And then we'll be going on Route 9 for to do some sidewalk work. And then we have a project on West Street by... Um, um by pot wine that we're going to be doing sidewalks there too oh okay so was that one of the ones that was going to come to the council too no, like are you doing additional measures like there was some traffic calming 
and pot mine in 116. Yes, yeah, so that's going to the, the TSO has it now. They haven't made a uh, recommendation. Um, so is that without TSO, is that going to delay that project? Um, We'll see. Okay. So that project, is that actually on Potwine or is that 116, like at the intersection? It's, it's 116. It's actually between Potwine and um, Glen, the Glendale. The other side of the street. Or like Long Meadow, right? It's Long no, Meadow Long Meadow. It's between Long Meadow and um, yeah. Potwine. Because we're actually moving the bus stops and doing some things with the bus stops. And wow. does that, um, does, oh, and that includes like crosswalks, right? With the bus stops and. Right. And there, is there a crosswalk there now? There's not. No. Okay. Even though people cross there. Yes. Even though you cross. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so thank you for that update. And all right. So I don't think I had too many other updates. Um, yeah, I mean, I had thought a bunch of those items were going to come because they are sitting at TSO. I thought that they were going to, TSO would talk about them. Um, but it sounds like they will later in the summer. Well, they, they see they tend to only get two or three, two or three items, or well, a meeting. Yeah. I checked their schedule today, um, and that I think they have like two meetings scheduled for June and then just one for July, unless they decide to have an extra meeting. Maybe Tracy, that's... I looked on there. Um, I saw two in July and two in August. Um, there was like a. TSO like a separate attachment that had their meeting oh was it for this year because maybe I thought, yeah 2024 oh all right and well, I, you can show I, me I didn't your know list. if you got, had access to no because I I went to I went in their meeting packets and so um that's where I saw it but maybe I had like a the an unapproved version and then they decided to add another meeting in July or something right yeah if you want to send me the, the one you found I will Okay. Thanks. So, okay. So I think that's it, unless we want to talk about the next meeting. Oh, wait, what about unanticipated things? Oh, do I you have unanticipated? Yes, I do. I just and had a question because um, a couple nights ago, I was going through the um, intersection, the roundabout at Triangle and East Pleasant. And um, there were two kids, maybe 10 and eight. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've been worried about this for a while now. And it's something that we actually had discussed maybe a couple of years ago about motorized um, electric scooters, bikes. Right. They started becoming much more prevalent, especially the bike part, which is um i i don't know i have questions about that but um there were two kids and they were going the wrong direction on the road on their one was on an electric i mean these were like 10 and 8 year olds they mm -hmm. were they were not old kids they were little kids and they were going through that intersection one on a motorized bicycle you know the kind that people don't even pedal on the thick right. tires sure. you know what i'm talking about yeah. And they didn't have helmets on. They were going the wrong direction. And they were, I, I was like, this is insanity. These poor kids, you know? Um, so, so I don't know. I, a, a few, like I said, a few years ago, we were talking about scooters. Um, it had been brought to our attention by someone else. And um, I think to me, that hasn't been a huge deal, but these motorized bikes, which really are go very fast and they're not bicycles because people don't actually pedal on them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and particularly children driving them without helmets on going the wrong way is just, it's, it was like, it blew my mind. And I'm sure those kids were probably doing it without their parents knowing or whatever, but I feel like it's something I don't know. We should have a discussion. I, I have no idea who even to discuss. Yeah, I wonder, and I wonder if Safe Reach the School has looked at that at all. Like, uh, Chris, if we talked to Tori, I would be a little interested. Like, if there is yeah. any education around like these e 
vehicle type things because I know from like personally that when we visit a big city and my youngest kid was only like 11 or 12 he was so excited yeah, that course. you have these like you know that you can take out these bikes on the corner or scooters on the corner even though he's supposed to be at least like 16 and everything right but and he didn't ask permission he had anyway he was able to unlock one um but then it's like he doesn't have a helmet like all these things he's not thinking about safety and um there's actually I and mean, they go when, pretty fast the when the secretary of transportation she spoke a few weeks ago um i can send a link to it um but she did actually raise the issue about pedestrian safety when you're sharing like multi-use paths and other spaces with these people on these devices that can go so much faster. And I actually noticed too, like earlier this week, there was a New York Times article just about the risks, right? I know like Myra Ross worries a lot about the risks of, you know, people with visibility, you know, visual impairments, like sharing with bicycles, but then like e-scooters and bikes are so much faster. Yeah, and, and heavier. Um, and the, heavier and like all these other things in that, you know, there is actually, um, yeah, I mean, the Massachusetts Secretary of Transportation said that they were trying to collect data to relate into the problem about like how many of those times those crashes are happening and things like that. So I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how to formalize any of this discussion, but I feel like, I mean, we should know at least what the rules and regs are governing that that are existing i would be very interested in knowing what those are um and then yeah. and then once we know what those are then we can proceed forward because i just see more and more particularly i mean that issue was like the older kid was on the bike and the younger kid who was super young was on the scooter and they were going the wrong way through this intersection it just seemed there were all kind without helmets on it there were all kinds mm. of that, and I was just worried about children and that, but um, yeah. I've been more worried lately about about these bikes that aren't really bikes. They're not people aren't pedaling on them. They're just using them to excel forward without helmets in bike lanes. I I, I just wonder what, without any registration on them, mm -hmm. what the rules are, particularly on those types of of well, <laughs> now as we're expanding our bike lanes and our um it, increasing the sidewalk um distance to accommodate all kinds of people i'm just curious because because these are di the, to me these these seem very different um, well there are i mean this could be a good question if we bring mass bike back too because yeah. i know that mass bike has been pushing for some legislation related around e-bikes and then actually this year, I believe this summer, the Massachusetts is rolling out a program that makes e-bikes really inexpensive, you know, for low income people to use as like a primary source of transportation. MassBike has been involved with um, pilot programs of this already in, I believe Springfield and in, there's also one in Worcester. Um, I don't know if MassBike's been part of all of them where people are actually using e-bikes, these subsidized e-bikes like for year round transportation, which of course this isn't kids, it's grown ups. But even so, like what are the rules related what are to the rules? Yeah. You know, do they them, are like it's regular. not like people have to like get a license, right? To use them, but they they do go really fast and yeah. stuff. And I but I think with these subsidy programs that the numbers will increase a lot. Yeah, sure. Is yeah. a scooter considered an e bike? A a motorized or a yeah, a motorized scooter is that also is that considered an e-bike? Yeah, that's what I think we need to get clarified. Right, sure. What the actual yeah. rules and laws are, you know. Right. That's I'm wondering a good idea. if the colleges have already taken any any proactive steps. No, not at UMass or Amherst. College. Well, I've heard that UMass will never have like e-scooter rentals on campus, except they supply their athletes with them. So oh well. Um, that for the general population that students have them themselves and then some campuses have banned them like because of the batteries and the fire risks Guilford, you, you might want to talk to the police chief and have one of the oh that would be come cool. and talk about you what are. they enforce oh yeah that would be great actually are I they would... doing enforcement around it 
Have you heard of that? Um, there's been some issues, and I've heard they've had, you know they've had discussions with people. Uh -huh. I mean, as much as people say we're a, a bad police force, I mean, our police force is kind of like Mayberry. Yeah, it is. They're very talk. They want to talk and they want to work things out. They don't want to just write people up and arrest them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. I, would I mean, I like the idea of bringing in Mass Bike, and I also like the idea of bringing in um, somebody from the police department. You know, maybe even the chief if he's available, because it was really helpful having him available in the discussion this morning, uh, just about more generally about traffic calming and enforcement and things like that. But it would just it would also be interesting to hear what their take is on these things, because because, you know, as a cyclist, I see it one way, but also as just an observer of pedestrian traffic and like these massive um, e-bikes, whatever, electric vehicle, small electric two wheeled <laughs> electric vehicles, I'm really um, concerned about pedestrian safety, too. Honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I also had a, coming up. I had another question about, um, and this is, I, I just noticed this on my morning runs, um, through the, um, roads that abut the, um, Amherst college football fields. Like what's the deal with the, why did, why do all of those houses on that road decide that they can put up no parking signs? They're clearly from the college like I don't understand that at no. all I, they're not actually enforceable I think I so know I, they're not I, I live on one of those I live on one of those roads right and I think at some point neighbors had complained about people parking no but um, I'm talking about the yeah I'm talking about the other end of the Amherst call like it's just weird I mean, I feel like Amherst College was like trying to be like proactive and say we're going to put up all these signs as Isn't part of like an agreement that they had. I mean, this is way before my time. Maybe Guilford knows more just on the history, but I think it was part of like an agreement about how they can be good neighbors with these facilities and with parking. It's very you know, weird to me. Why? Know Guilford, but they're, they're supposed to put no parking signs up during big events. So they had graduation last week. So they probably put signs up around the neighborhoods telling people not to park in certain places. Yeah. But then, but then they don't usually, it takes a while to go around and pick them up afterwards. No, no, no. But they do this for any kind of games or whatever. Yes, for big events. But, but I think it's because in some of the residential areas, people had complained about. I mean, there's only one way traffic. That if people going to Amherst College had like parked in their neighborhood and things like that. Oh, yeah. So like in my neighborhood, sometimes people have them in their front yard, you know, they're on, they're right next to their property, like. I know property owners who just like pick them up and stuff. Yeah, and I was just, just or basically tell the Amherst College police not to put them out. It's all done through Amherst College. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah, but they're trying. I'm to, just wondering I about think they're the trying to be good that. neighbors. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's actually enforceable. Like, are they going to ticket anybody? Clearly, right? it's um, not enforceable. I'm talking no. about the legality of putting out the signs in the first. Oh uh, right, yeah, because it seems very elitist. <laughs> my opinion <laughs> i would love to put up those signs on my street too well they're temp they're only temporary signs like i i put those I up all around it's well, meant we can just do that on our street too <laughs> why not it's arbitrary so that's what you're saying it's arbitrary well no you have to have a reason and you have to have but if you <clears throat> i mean you could put them up on your street yeah, and obviously. they would stay up until someone found them and took them down yeah. And then you just put them up again. That's kind of like traffic coming. Yeah. I was really sad though. Like I was CC'd on an email about um out in Amherst Woods on Wildflower Drive, you know, that the families there had done a campaign, like where they had put up like a lot of like handmade signs about having traffic calming mm -hmm. in their neighborhood. And like somebody had gone through and like ripped them up and vandalized them all and things. So yeah, but they're I mean it's all I mean all No, but that's not saying no parking, that's just saying like please slow down and I mean, but all of these are on the public way anyway, all the signs, as far as I can tell. So, you know, anyone can do right. whatever they want on those spaces, sure. as far as I can tell. Anyway, so so I, have, I, I have another just quick topic while we're talking, but um, about potholes and like pothole patching and things. So I'd seen on C-Click Fix that sometimes 
when people report potholes, like one response is that the DPW will consider patching potholes or filling potholes, like if they are a certain magnitude in terms of, I think, like the language that gets used is like they need to be at least, I don't know, a foot wide and three or four inches deep or something. And then, so like mm -hmm. if they're verified to be that big, then does that actually mean that any of the potholes that meet that will then get filled or only if they're like on certain types of roads or? They go for the deep biggest potholes first and they go for the main roads first. And if it's a delamination, which means like the top inch or inch and a, inch and a quarter came off, those are usually left until we get all the other potholes done. Got it. And what about roads that you just like patch like every year? They get patched nice. every year until they get paved. Okay. <laughs> like on my street on the I uh, know. Like on the northbound on the northbound lane, right? I think you were you patched it last year, but now it all gets done again. And then we and have what... a whole we have a whole new crew of rakers and we, we definitely need to spend a little more time teaching them how to rake asphalt. Uh and now what about um like the places where you have like storm grates and things that have like dropped below the pavement and that like that those kind of holes have like spread yep like we there's those... been there's been some like there's one i can think of i know that some of the stuff on like pelham road main street was patched but there's one near a grate that's like close to the southeast street northeast street intersection Yep. that like it's it kind of is like starting to like eat the road it's like getting <laughs> it's spreading out so I mean, this, it's the same thing I mean, uh, main, main roads are first minor roads go second and the severity of the of the collapse and those, and those are directly those problems are directly related to the fact that we we put a lot of salt on the road and the salt kind of interacts with the masonry of the of the structure most of these have at least one or two courses of bricks with uh, mortar holding it together and the salt just kind of destroys it and they start falling apart and sinking. So, but that's how we do it. We're main, main roads first, worst to least. So, I mean, there was one on, on, um, like on, I guess it is Pelham road, like close to the intersection that I had seen or, you know, that my car keeps getting, you know, <laughs> stuck at and, uh, but that I was going to put it on C-Click Fix, but then I saw that it was already there. Then I guess it's probably been reported like multiple times. Maybe. I think it's on the, um, it's on like on the eastbound lane. Past anyway. the bridge? No, I think before the bridge. I so mean, it's, it's town side of the bridge. Oh yeah, I guess it's Main Street then, yeah. So that one was, that one was fixed. Oh, it was, okay. Yeah. And I have noticed like that some of the ones have gotten filled, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Thank you. So like when you're doing these larger projects, like when you, now that you're doing like road paving and things too, are you also still doing like potholes as well? Like do you keep doing potholes like all summer? Or is there a point when you right. <laughs> they do, pot they do the potholes projects? all the time? Oh, okay. So and yes, the, the the same people who do potholes do structures and mow the grass and sweep this downtown and do the other little things that have to be done. So it's only there's only thirteen of them, and they do the signs and the parking meters, um, and they do vacation like we do. And so, yeah. Wow. And right now we're too short, so there's only eleven of them. They seem busy. I'm sure they're really busy in the in the summer the construction season thank you okay so i mean joe Stefan, do you guys have any questions or anything i don't know all right any other questions and kim i did want to um i think i sent you an email once but i did want to understand that to look with you at the the crosswalk you had talked about downtown near um hendrick park like how they had reoriented the crosswalk. I was trying to understand it. Oh, but maybe yeah. you could meet me there sometime because I was trying to understand like what the issue is or what the issue is that you're seeing <laughs> because you're there a lot more than me. So yeah, no problem. All right. And then, so do we think that we can have 
of the five of us who are here now, which is all of us except Marcus, um, does the 20th work to have a meeting. So the Amherst schools will be out by then. Yeah, I just signed up for, um, I'm not sure when it starts, the Hitchcock Center um, uh, fundraiser oh. that night. And I think it might start early. Oh, okay. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure it can be there. Okay, then. all right. I'm okay with it, but, you know, I'm, could be okay. Right. <laughs> well, so, I mean, part of it was that um, just with the town manager, because he wanted to bring the transportation commission idea to us. So if we, if we, for example, if we thought that we weren't going to meet like on the 20th, I mean, we could push the meeting to like the 27th or something if people are available then. I mean, that's right near the end of the month, but. Oh, this. Can... Okay. You yeah. Know in June. I can make it. Sorry. I just saw the thing, the, the fun thing. Okay. Six, but Five. I could, I could go till whenever six thirty. Yeah, least. no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, you can, and we can always do comments too. What? This is the 20th. So we'll keep it on the yes. 20th then. I mean, I think it might just be easier like yeah. before we get into like the middle of summer. Okay. All right. I'll tell the town manager and, and he's working in that time frame. Okay. So, okay, great. All right. And, uh, and I do know that a couple of people's like terms are up if people want to continue or not. So Angelo is going to send me those details. And we do have a vacancy. So if the commission is gonna take a long time, maybe we can fill our vacancy. We could ask the town manager about that too. All right. Um, where okay. would where would where would we send people who are who might be interested in I guess they could fill out one of those community okay. Okay. activity right. forms or CAF forms. Got it. All right. Okay, cool. thank you guys. Thanks. Right. See you next Thanks. time. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Guilford. Bye, Guilford.